Public comment on agenda items? Mary Louise? Good evening. Whoops. Well, that was an exciting Wasn't it? part of your meeting, and nice to see everyone. Thank you for allowing me to come in and speak with you. And I'm so pleased to be able to hear all of you when you're recorded on TV. It's a delightful experience. Um, three years ago, you voted to pursue the renovation of Hampton Academy rather than construct a whole brand new building. Uh, I agreed with that. I celebrate it, and I'm delighted that you did it, and it worked out beautifully. But that leaves the parcel known as Bachelor <laughs> Park um, sitting there happily <laughs> without having anything done to it. Um, the town, I think, has been supportive of the school district. Um, we, uh, the town actually leased the two parcels, the Martell and Arnold parcels, to you for the parking access uh, out at the academy. I think it was a dollar a year. So you're saving a dollar this year, which is pretty good. Um, I would like to ask you if you would be kind enough to give serious consideration to donating the Bachelor Park parcel, including the pond, to the Town of Hampton Conservation Commission. We, I'm in my 54th year as a resident of Hampton. More than half of my life has been spent here. And we have changed. We have changed rather dramatically. Uh, I'm worried that we're building on every square inch of land and we're doing accessory dwelling units and we're bulging at the seams and a lot of our natural beauty is gone. Uh, I saw your um, meeting on August 8th and you were discussing the possibility of some kind of grant and uh, matching funds, $300,000 and $300,000. I'd hate to see a request for $300,000 to match a grant on your uh, agenda and your um, uh, vote for your vote next March. The public, thank God, has been so supportive of this school district. I'm so happy we got that bond. And congratulations, by the way, to Mr. Lunny as your business administrator. 3.15% interest rate is mighty darn nice. Uh, so uh, I would say to you that I would think it would be a wonderful gesture for you as a board to donate that property in perpetuity. I, I know you had a little fun with perpetuity in August. That means forever, I think, uh, as just um, passive recreation. Sit by the pond and have your lunch. Uh, go and feed the ducks. I love the ducks. Uh, take a nature walk. I'm sure teachers want to take nature walks with their youngsters. Don't put in a road. Don't put in street lights. Don't dig up another parcel of the beautiful, beautiful land that we still own. Um, I have such respect for the Conservation Commission. I had the privilege of serving uh, for a year as the Selectman representative to the Conservation <laughs> Commission. And while um, I admired them, and I've al always been a conservationist, I really got a hands-on feel for what they do for the town. I think it would be a wonderful, wonderful gift, a legacy gift from you to please, please save that parcel. I asked Chairman of the Conservation Commission, Barbara Reynaud, if she would come in uh, tonight to be with me in case you have questions or... Uh, Barbara, where'd you go? Come up here. Come on, come on up if you... Yeah. Want. You know, I'm, I'm at the point in my life where I'm not at all embarrassed to beg. <laughs> so what I'm doing tonight is sitting here begging you to save that land. Barbara, tell them what conservation will do. 
what conservation will do mm -hmm. is leave it in its natural vegetative state as it is now in perpetuity in perpetuity <laughs> um, we generally man we manage a lot of there are a number of different ways to do it but we manage some town property as it is and other properties we actually have easements on that are in perpetuity to allow that land to remain as open space and there are a lot of practical reasons for doing that on that particular parcel it's a major drainage basin for all three sides of it and that even though it's the drainage from liberty lane coming into the pond that's actually the beginning of the drakes river which starts on liberty lane and then goes under toll farm road or then we really know it's the Drakes River, but that's where it comes through. And we do know a current, a, a new delineation would need to be done because those things change over time. But based on the wetland maps we have, we think the property's about half wetland now, or within the Wetland Conservation District, which is the area we, mm -hmm. we try to keep uh, vegetated and available for stormwater storage, which is a big issue right now. Um, with the hurricanes that we've been seeing and the problems that they're having because of building in wetlands. Um, so for us, it would be um, great, <laughs> fantastic to be able to protect that and, and protect um, the drainage capability that it gives us for Glen Hill, for up at Smutty Nose, for Liberty Lane, um, and to have the, the, the habitat, the natural habitat there. We know the pond is well used. Uh, by the little kids and, uh, and 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 people walking through in the backs and a lot of them walking just walking their dogs but uh, but it is used and people do take their children back there and we've had some Boy Scouts do work there yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, they've put in a bridge and benches and tables and uh, made it an inviting area for people um, so and I, and I got the duck we would signs. be thrilled we would be absolutely thrilled if we could yes. protect that, keep it protected in some manner so mm -hmm. that it remains Jeez, open. Good. Good. And former Sorry, chairman I'm of the Conservation Commission, J. Dina, I have shamelessly begged to have, well, you know, you reach a point in your life where if something's really desperately important, you're not afraid to talk about it. But I've just begged this lovely board to leave as a legacy to the Conservation Commission in perpetuity for passive recreation, the nice parcel of Batchelder Park. And what did they say? Well, I, we're, we're, I'm looking at smiles. <laughs> we haven't even said anything yet. <laughs> no. They've been listening. They've been listening. They've been a very good audience. Excellent. May I, may I ask yeah, yeah, and then it's open to the rest of the board for questions also. Robert, you, you're, I'm sure you're aware that the school district has responsibility over there for maintenance and upkeep. So yes, we, I see Keith occasionally. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. You, you see him at meetings. So, yeah. But um, we do have our the folks that take care of our, our yards, you know, our school yards, mm -hmm. also work out there. They take care of the brush off of the pond, mm -hmm. also mow the lawn and do other things yeah. to keep the, the weeds and so forth. As you know, we, we have had a little bit of a problem with the ducks <laughs> because they eat, they erode yeah, yeah. the side of the pond. Um, so we've been trying to do a little preventive work there. Um, and uh, we also are responsible for the dam. Uh, we have the dam is um, uh, evaluated by the state of New Hampshire. And so we've had um, to make sure that the dam is in, uh, in good stead. Um, in terms of their uh, requirements. So those are things that the school district ha has been doing since, well, since Nathan and I have been here. Right. Mm -hmm. Is that something that the, the Conservation Commission would continue to do? How, how would that be taken care of? Uh, we monitor. We don't do as much as you've been doing. Yeah, we, we do quite a bit say, over there. Yeah. Because of what you said, we know that the children use it for fishing and other things, but when, when we go over and we take a ride over occasionally, there's mm -hmm. always uh, folks that sit on the benches and, mm -hmm. you know, just enjoy the, 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 obviously enjoy the environment. And so we want to keep it, you know, clean, um, trash picked up and all that. 
um, because it represents the community and it represents the school district. So, we do have a conservation fund, um, and that fund provides not only for the acquisition of um, private property for conservation purposes or conservation easements, but also for maintenance of those properties once they become under the management of the Conservation Commission. Um, as Barbara said, I, I, I don't understand fully what you all do, and I don't know that we would be able to do that to the same extent that you would do, but we would certainly work hard to make sure that the property is properly maintained and functional and accessible. Board members have any questions? Well, I, I'm, a, I'm at a little loss. So if you can you know, kind of bring me into the scope of things. Kathleen mentioned that we make, we do maintenance over there. We maintain the dam for obvious reasons. Right. And you're into the natural state of the property. And you did say that you could continue to maintain that. The concern is the dam uh, and, you know, people going there and enjoying themselves. Would that still continue to happen? We have, well, we have another property that has a dam, uh, the ice pond. The ice pond on dam is we're and, working on And now. we're working hard to repair that dam, which has fallen into disrepair. Um, we also mow the field over there um, to make it accessible. Uh, for residents because they do use it during the summer and, and during the winter also for ice skating on the pond. So we do that type of maintenance. Like I said, I, I just don't know the details of everything that you folks do over there, so I can't categorically say that we would do everything that you do, but I, I also can't say that we wouldn't. Okay, that's explained. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Any other questions? I wanted to look at uh, the land. I've lived here over 55 years plus, yeah. and uh, I used to skate at Bas. We call it Basilus Pond. I think mm -hmm. used to be Coffin Pond. There used to be an, uh, a shed there where yeah. kids would get warm, mm -hmm. and but I had never really walked the land. So the other night when I was going for a walk, I went into the woods and started to walk, and I got in there a little bit. And it got dark, I got scared, and I came out, <laughs> and that's as far as I've ever seen. So, um, but I think you've taken... I've walked, I've walked it many times with students, and it is, you know, obviously it's a beautiful environment for all, all the residents in town, but it's especially a wonderful, um, a wonderful place for educational purposes for students as well. Mm -hmm. so. And I've seen many parcels in Hampton get gobbled up oh, yes. where you wouldn't think they could possibly put a house in mm -hmm. or oh, a yes. development. And they do. And they do. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm guessing the board is not prepared to take action tonight. I think, I think we should take just a step back as a board and talk about it together um, before, we, before we make the final decision. Although, but I hope that you will consider a time frame mm -hmm. because I hate to see things that get started and then get delayed. And you can picture, if you will, a nice sign on the premises saying donated to the Hampton Conservation Commission by the Hampton School Board in whatever date. And you'll be memorialized forever. Mm -hmm. And just as a point of information, um, there are different means of protecting that land so that it remains open space. That doesn't necessarily mean giving it to us. I mean, you could place an easement on it, I believe. I mean, it, that would need to be explored because there are legal avenues that you can take uh, to get it protected, legally protected. Um, Meaning a conservation easement. Way with which you could put restrictions on there as you see fit regarding access, usage, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of properties in Hampton that are under conservation easement. Uh, one that's, I think, very visible and very notable is the Batchelder Farm. 
um, yeah. out on Exeter yeah. Road that's still owned by the Batchelder family, mm -hmm. but it's protected. It's accessible by town residents for a variety of different activities. Nobody will ever build out there. Uh, so that, to Barbara's point, that is another option for the school board to retain ownership of the property, but to have it placed under a conservation easement. Mm -hmm. If you folks, as you carry on your discussions, Barbara and Jay, I mean, know a lot more than I do about the details, and I don't think uh, they would feel badly if you called on them. Okay. And uh, Rayanne, our staff person, is available Monday through Wednesday, yep. um, and you can pop in and ask her questions because she's extremely knowledgeable. Uh, about all of these things. So if you did have questions that, that popped up during your own discussions, um, she'd be happy to help you. And of course, we're always available to you. It, it does make sense because most all of our the fields in Hampton or the, the green spaces are used by sports teams mm -hmm. or over, you know, and if we had something that people could use no matter what, <coughs> what season or whatever, and it's just for quiet recreation. That makes a lot of sense. The recreation department does have property on Tall Farm Road, and they've discussed over the years putting a baseball field there. Right. So they do have land. Right, but I mean, this would be a neat place where people wouldn't yes. compete with that. Yes. They just could sit soothe. and relax and peace. Yeah. Make your soul happy. Yeah. What Except for the fishing frame, tournament. What sort of time frame do you think we as a board would need before we can yeah. give a decision? I don't know if we'd be ready for next month, possibly the following month. It would give us a couple months to... But we would need it so we could explore all of your options, right. such yeah. as the one that Jay just defined. I like that. No, I just, um, and you retain it um, with, with um, certain um, easements for it. And mm -hmm. um, then I would also want to check in with uh, your, your legal um, mm -hmm. attorney so that we can make sure that all of that is, is, is do you correctly think by done. Our, do you think by our November meeting that we could give them an answer? I think we, by November we can have the information for you, whether you have an answer or not, it's going to be your call, right? But we'll, we'll work on getting together all the information for you by November. Yeah, okay. Good. Because I'd hate to have everybody, you know, stir up everybody and then have it all fall apart and, and be shoveled off in the yeah, no, closet know. somewhere. Yeah. Because I do think that this is a wonderful opportunity for the town. Well, we talked about it at our last meeting, so. Yeah. We're on our way to, yeah. Okay. So all we need is for them to give us the rest of the information. And you're very kind to let me come in and <laughs> impose on you. But I respect all of you. You do a good job. And that, thank you for that nice sign. <laughs> It'll have all your names on it. I know. Huh? <laughs> thank you, folks. And we'll be seeing you soon. Okay. We will we'll be thank you. Did you have a question? No, no, I was going to say it's just a little special meeting, you know, between now and November, and then the November meeting. Yeah. You can do it a week before. Well, they have to get some stuff ready, so. Well, I know, but that's six weeks away. And call on Jay and Barbara if you need them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I apologize for being late. Okay. Thank you. We'll chase down easement. Options, any other questions, data points, factoids that you need or want? You've got to consider what the costs are associated to maintaining it. You, you should know that. We'll break right. that out for you, um, how, how we handle that. Um, obviously, the um, the usage, um, you you know, we didn't, you didn't make a decision, really. You just said, we're going to, we're just going to keep it. Right. You didn't make any decision, so you could still keep it. But I, I did like um, Jay's, I, I liked his idea of the easement, the way they did the Bachelor Farm. To me, that sounded like the best of both worlds for, for everyone. Anyway. Well, right. one way or the other, it's important that we get some direction. And, and f the reason for that is, as you, as you recall, um, Nathan uh, and I proposed uh, the grant for, ha for Hampton, remember, at your last meeting. Um, they did accept our grant proposal, not the, well, it's an initial kind of a, um, a, a proposal, and we did make the cut, so we 
we are eligible to do something if we want. They're going to come. They were coming down to visit with us and walk the property and talk with us. So we don't have a hard date for that yet. So we, we do need to make a decision because, uh, you know. You guys need this on your plate for that. Well, I understand that, Ginny, but, you know, there's opportunities that you can't just not, not pay any attention to. True. I, I did but reach out to, to um, the recreation director, Diana, yeah. and she was very much wanted to be part of it, so she also would assist us. Anyway, we'll get back to you, okay? Is All right, Frank, we'll do it as soon as get it done as quickly as possible. No, no, the only reason I brought up maybe having a meeting a week before our normal <laughs> November meeting, then when we presented with everything in November on top of everything else, we're probably going to push that back another week or two or three or four. Remember, we can't ascertain all that information and digest it within a period of 45 minutes during the November. Right. Right. Especially right. not when you've got three or four budget meetings built I was just going to say that. Yeah. Don't forget, yeah. happy, yeah. happy happy budget seasons are upon us. Oh, I understand. <laughs> already started. But, and I think you really, yeah, I think your point is good, Frank, really. Okay. All right, let's see what we can dig up for you, and we'll get it going, and we'll we'll keep you updated on it. How's that? Right. Maybe if we get an update at the next meeting. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll make sure we do that.